Hello everybody, today I want to talk about lens filters. Filters are very important and vital to every shoot and I want to explain to you why by going over what they're for, what are the differences and how do you use them. So if you've been wondering how to prevent overexposure, create stunning effects or simply protect your lenses, you're going to want to stick around for the next part. First, let's talk about some information you're going to want to know before you pick up that new filter. There are two types of filters that are typical in the industry. We have square filters that work with systems like the Lee system and matte boxes typically used for video. Then there are round filters, which is what we'll be focusing on in this segment. Taking a look at the front of our lens, I want to make sure it's threaded. Some wide angle lenses don't allow for a filter to be threaded onto the front of the lens, so make sure you check the front of your lens first. The thread size of your filter is going to be determined by the lens, but it's important to note that filters can be adapted using adapter rings. Looking at a couple different lenses, we can see that we come across a set of numbers indicating the thread diameter of our lens. There is a large number of typical thread sizes and lens manufacturers tend to use a variety of them. Something everyone should also look out for if you're shooting with an ultra wide angle lens is I would suggest looking for a slim version of the filter as this will prevent vignetting. And lastly, if you're looking to adapt a filter to multiple lenses, it's recommended you purchase the largest diameter lens filter that corresponds with your lens kit. With an inexpensive adapter ring, you can share filters with all your lenses, and it's also recommended to move up in thread size and not down, as this can also cause vignetting. Now let's shift things over to the types of filters and what they're used for. Starting with the UV filter, probably the most commonly found on lenses. These filters were once important to help keep ultraviolet rays out of the film, causing haze and over blueing of skies, but now have become an inexpensive form of protection from scratches on the front of lens elements, as most digital cameras have UV filter properties built onto the sensors. Filters like the Heliopan UV filter I use on my lenses are also known for saving your lenses from accidental drops. I can say that in my short time as a salesperson at our Santa Ana location, I had multiple customers that came in for repairs on lenses they had dropped and thought they broke. We would remove the dented and shattered filters only to reveal that the front lens element was intact and undamaged. Then we just simply replaced the UV filter. It's definitely not a guarantee, but I've seen it work in multiple occasions and I have them on most of my lenses. With that being said, there are differences in quality out on the market, and I would urge you to purchase the best quality that you can afford. If you think of it this way, you spend a lot of money on sharp, high quality lenses only to stick a subpar lens filter in front of it. It doesn't make sense to me. Now let's talk about polarizing filters. I'm currently using a Hoya NXT Plus Circular Polarizing Filter, and I gotta say it's been performing pretty great. Polarizers help cut out all polarized light perpendicular to the axis of the filter, bringing up the color saturation and the transparency of glass surfaces and water. It can be used in both photo and video projects, and a good tip is to make sure the lens and the filter are pointed at the light source reflection at a 90 degree angle. Then simply twist the ring till you find the surface transparent. I want to also note that polarizing filters will decrease the amount of available light, giving you an ND effect of one to one and a half stops, depending on your filter. So keep that in mind when exposing your image. Neutral density filters. They act like sunglasses for your lens. They are neutral in color, hence the name, and they act by lowering the amount of available light reaching your sensor. The filter strength is typically measured as ND and a number or by stops of light. These are a must have for any videographer as shutter speeds are typically low and camera native ISO's limits reach up to 12,600. So if you plan on shooting low apertures or slow shutter speeds, a neutral density filter is what you need. 
You can find an ND filter like this in hard stops, meaning a set amount of light is filtering through. You can get them in variable versions that create a dimming effect caused by twisting two optical lenses using the front ring of the filter. I tend to lean towards using these filters when I shoot video because I'm able to adapt to lighting conditions changing frequently, which makes them great for shooting outdoors. Hard stop NDs are commonly used in Hollywood movie sets and in photography to create a long exposure image. You can create some pretty cool effects like smoothing out moving water and rolling clouds. You can also find graduated versions exclusive for filter holders that help cut the sky brightness gradually in landscapes. Variable ND filters are a must have for me as I'm constantly shooting with low apertures and natural light. I love being able to shoot photos and video at open apertures without having to sacrifice my shutter speed when shooting video. In photography, I love using the ND filters to slow the shutter speed of the camera to create effects like smoothing out a waterfall or clouds in the sky. The last type of filter I want to talk about is FX filters. These filters can create some pretty awesome effects like kaleidoscope, refraction, and starring. A common filter used in Hollywood is the softening filter or the beauty filter. It works by diffusing highlights, creating a soft roll off between the highlights and the shadows. I have a set of Moments Cinebloom filters that I enjoy using because I find this gives the image a soft look, smoothing out blemishes and creating a vintage lens look. Now I know there are other filter types I did not talk about in this video, but these are simply the ones I'm constantly using and would recommend to all my friends. But if you'd like to share filters you're using, please drop a comment below and share your work with us via Instagram at Sammy's Camera, as I'd love to know what you're using. As always folks, you can find all these products I mentioned today at sammys.com or by visiting us at one of our Southern California locations. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and we'll continue to send them your way. That's all for us here today, guys. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.